Hi, darlings. We are starting a new project today, and this is the dance genre project. So it's kind of a massive project. The whole thing is worth 305 points, and it will last from the day that we come back from Thanksgiving through the day before we leave for Christmas break. Some of your classes, if you only have a few students, we might get finished early, but uh, we have a lot of parts that I'm going to speak about, hopefully in different segments. So for this video, I want to talk about the outline. And this is the first thing that we're going to do whenever we get ready to do our project. So make sure if you weren't in class on Monday, November the 30th, that you have talked to me about your style of dance that you want to do. Because in every class, only one group will be able to do one genre. So like if my first group is doing hip hop, but you haven't submitted your topic yet, you won't be able to do hip hop. Um, I won't have two groups doing bachata or anything like that. So just make sure if you weren't here today that you communicate with me and we make sure that we're doing a genre that nobody else has already been assigned. So with that, we are in Google Classroom. I'm going to talk through the first thing that I posted that says dance genre project teaching outline. And then it also says, just bring your Chromebook or your laptop all week and your charger. So here we go. This is for everybody in dance two, three, and four. And the outline alone is worth 80 points, which is a lot for an outline. So you have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in class to work on the digital aspect. Hopefully you get done earlier than that, but if not, you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to work on the outline and the visual. And then Thursday, Friday, you have to do like the, the actual choreography piece that goes with it. So you are either working by yourself or you're working with one partner and you're responsible for one entire class period, which is 48 minutes, I'm pretty sure. Every class period is 48 minutes, and you will minus 10 minutes because every uh, class will dress out. So you are only in charge of 38 minutes, even though that still sounds like a long time. But you can do it. Um, on your teaching outline, you want to make sure that you have sources and you also want to make sure that you have in-text citations, which I'll probably do a separate video on that because I want you to at least start on your outline first. Okay, so we did this first one in class today. This is just telling me if you're going to work by yourself or with a partner and what are your top two genres that you want to teach. So if you want to do hip hop and jazz. Uh, first choice is uh, polka. Second choice is spring, swing. Uh, you'll just write that down. And hopefully nobody has your top choice or for sure not your second choice. So that's what that one was. The second one, we're going to go ahead and come over here to the dance genre teaching outline. And when you click on it, you'll see that it is very, very bare. So there's not a lot going on here. Um, instead of me speaking through this one, this is the one that you'll actually use. I'm going to go back here and we're going to go to the example. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. So this is from a long time ago, six years ago. So my name was Davis back then. And I actually used a Prezi that if you click on it, it won't even work. So I need to update that. I'll hopefully do that later this afternoon <clears throat> so that y'all can have a good example of a visual as well. So I did my example on tap and I have a couple of students who want to do tap. That's totally fine. Just make sure that your outline doesn't look identical to mine. So at the top, we've got presenters. This is going to be your name or if you're working with a partner, your partner's name for the date. You're going to go ahead and leave that blank unless you are volunteering to go first. And then you, I would put you on Monday, December the 11th. Uh, no, Monday, December the 7th, okay? Otherwise, you'll leave it blank, and I will kind of create a calendar for us. The most important thing is that we've got to be flexible because y'all know that we've got kids going in and out of quarantine, and everybody needs to be prepared to go on Monday next week because the person who might be scheduled to go might not make it for one reason or another. Maybe they're sick. Maybe they're in quarantine. Maybe who knows what happened. Okay, so everybody has to be prepared to go on a day 
other than the one that they were scheduled to perform or to present on. Your objective is really simple and it's just asking, what do you want students to accomplish by the end of the class period? So mine is students will recognize and demonstrate tap dance. Yours might be students will learn five new hip hop skills. Students will apply uh, lyrical basics to a lyrical dance. So anything where you're talking about your genre and you're giving us something really simple that we can do. Next, what materials do you need? Y'all don't have to put down projector and computer and all that stuff, but if you did want like students to write something down on a post-it note, then you could write post-it notes on there and that lets me know I need to get post-it notes for you. If you want students to bring um, like sneakers because you're doing hip hop, then let us know so that I can remind students to bring those those things. If you want students to fill out a survey before your class period, again, let me know. That would be like a material needed um, so that I can get that to students before they leave for your, before they leave for the day before you teach, if that makes sense. Next, websites needed. So if you do a YouTube clip, you can just put that in your Google slide. So really, the only thing you need here for websites needed is your Google slide, which you'll get to that after you've completed the teaching outline. The next one is music. So this could be, you could just copy and paste your playlist link. Um, you don't have to write down the songs like I did, but you're more than welcome to if you want. So a playlist that would be good would be either YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes. That's where, where I usually have the most success. Then we're going to move on to the actual teaching outline. So in Rogers, our district does uh, or observes the GNAG teaching template. And so there are five elements that we're trying to do. We want A, to have a goal, and the teacher needs to tell the students the goal. Then we need to access prior knowledge, which is telling or figuring out what students already know about the subject you're teaching that day. Then we need new information. So this is where the teacher tells the student new information about the topic for the day. Then we have application. So this is where students are working actively with the new material, whether it's a worksheet or you're actually doing the new dance or you're creating a dance, you're doing a lab, all of that is application. And then the last one is we revisit the goal. So we want to come back and say, okay, today our goal was to learn three tap skills. Did we do it? Yes, we did. What were the skills? Shuffle, shuffle, hop, step, flap. Awesome. Clap for yourselves. Okay. So those are the five things that we're trying to do. And in this outline, we are kind of prepping ourselves. We're almost writing a script for what we're going to say, but it's not going to be word for word. The more prepping that you do, probably the more confident you'll feel, but it definitely does not need to be word for word because I don't want you to read from your outline. And I probably won't let you take your outline with you. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So first step, what's the goal? The students will ask, or the teacher will ask the students to get out their objective calendars. This was something we used to do in Rogers, but we don't do it anymore. So you could either just say the goal. You could ask for a student to say the goal out loud. You could write it on the whiteboard. You could write it on the mirror. Um, you could ask kids to write it down. You can do kind of whatever you want, but that's the first part should be really, really simple. Okay. Then we go to access prior knowledge. So what I say here is, since mine's on tap, I want to ask the class, what is tap dancing? Or who in here knows what tap dancing is? Who in here has danced in tap shoes before? Uh, who in here knows anything about where tap dance came from? Okay, so you're just asking really general questions, or you can ask people to write it down on a post-it note or a piece of paper if you don't, you know, think that people will respond. Um, to figure out what do these kids already know? Because if they already know where stuff came from, there's no reason for us to tell them. But ideally, there, or for the most part, most people aren't going to know where your style of dance came from. And then you'll be able to tell us that in new information. If people do already know uh, a certain part of what you're going to talk about, you can just kind of skip over that quickly. Okay. 
Uh, it says that I'm going to show you a short video and then I'm going to ask some questions about it. So you're more than welcome to use resources like YouTube. We just don't want all of your time in front of the class to be with YouTube. <laughs> okay, we want to hear from you. And more importantly than the new information, we want you to be teaching us the style of dance up at the front. Okay. So you'll see over here on the far right where it says minutes, that's where you're going to tell us about how long you think it will take to do each section. Access prior knowledge, 10 minutes is honestly probably a little bit too long. You want to do maybe like three to five minutes. And for your teaching part, the new information, we don't want that to be much longer or any longer than 10 minutes. Like let's go for about five, five to eight minutes. So in new information, think about this as like the lecture or the presentation part where you're going to follow your Google slide that's going to have primarily pictures, not a lot of words. And you're going to tell us about the history, the culture, what people wear when they dance that style of dance, um, what, like how it has developed. Maybe you did something uh I don't know, like if you did African dance, well, Africa has been around for a really long time. So there might be some development of African dance from the beginning of time until now. So we've got a lot of different things. I'm not going to read to you. You can read um, on the actual link that I sent out. But I want you to tell us some stuff about the genre that we might not already know. Okay. This is also where you're going to use some resources or some citations um, because most of this information isn't just basic or general knowledge. And if you are telling us something that isn't general knowledge, that's where you need to do a citation and say, this information came from wherever. Okay. Next, this is where the bulk of your teaching should be. We're doing the application section. So this is where you're actually going to stand up stretches out for whatever's appropriate for your genre. So if I'm teaching tap, then I need to stretch out your ankles and your calves, maybe your arms, but I don't need to stretch out like your hips and your hamstrings, your core, like all that stuff. We can wait for another day to do that. Okay. So whatever is pertinent to your style of drink, style of dance, you're going to teach that or stretch that part. Uh, you'll also be doing this to music. So this is where that playlist comes in. Then we need to figure out the basics of your style. Okay, so if I'm doing, if I'm doing um, tap, these are like even more basic than what some people would say. So stomp, brush, tap, dig, and step were some of the ones that I came up with. And then I might go a step further and do, okay, well, these are the shuffle. This is the flap. This is a ball change. This is, um, there are lots of other little basics that we can learn. And then after we've learned the basics, you're going to teach us a short piece of choreography. Okay. So 30 seconds to a minute worth of choreography using those basics and some other steps too. Okay. Then after you've done the bulk of your teaching in that application section, we're going to go back to the goal. And so you might say, all right, guys, our goal today was to learn five new steps. Somebody raise your hand and show me one and somebody will show you a dig. Somebody show me another. Somebody shows you a shuffle until you get to five and you say, oh, my gosh, guys, this was so awesome. Thank you so much for your participation today. Crowd of y'all. Everybody clap for themselves. And then you're done. OK, so revisiting the goal is just something really simple at the end of class um, where you just ask us, did we do what we said that we were going to do? OK, and like I said, references are right here. Now, Google Docs lets you do them within Google Docs. So I will um, do a little video or I'll find a YouTube video of somebody already doing it. Um, but that is your outline. It looks like a lot of work but it can totally be done. Make sure that if you're working with a partner, you've split it up evenly and that you're both working on the outline first and then you can go to the visual, but don't split it up where like partner A does the outline and part partner two does the visual, okay? Because that visual has to follow the sequence of the outline. I know that's a ton of information. I know this is a really long video, but please let me know if you have any questions and we will try to figure it out together. See y'all soon.